to Stories Podcast. I'm your host, Amanda Weldon. Today's story is called The Giant's Causeway, an adaptation of the Irish folktale written for you by Daniel Hines. Thanks! Enjoy the episode! The Giant's Causeway Once upon a time, when fairy folk and heroes still roamed the wild green of Ireland, there was a giant. His name was Finn McCool, and he was a great and mighty man. From the time he was a boy, the Druids read his destiny in the stars, and he accomplished a great many things. He learned the secret fighting techniques from the hermit in the Bladma Mountains. He caught the salmon of knowledge and ate the magic hazelnuts from the holy tree. He even used the glowing tip of a magic spear to keep himself awake for seven days and seven nights while pursuing the evil wizard, Island. But those are stories for another day. This story is about a different battle. It's about the time Finn McCool went up against the evil giant, Benadonner. It's called The Day of the Broken Bridge, or The Clash of the Causeway, and its violent ends can still be seen in Ireland today. It started off like a normal morning. Finn McCool was having breakfast with his wife, another beautiful giant by the name of Una. Together, they made thick pancakes to prepare for the day. Una ate hers with honey, Finn ate his with butter, and each one was large enough to cover you or I like a cozy quilt. While they ate, a little bird flew up next to them. It was a clever thrush, one that knew how to speak the old Gaelic of the giants. Finn McCool, it said, perching on the giant's shoulder to tweet into his ear. The giant Benadonner in Scotland says you're no match for him. He says if you have any courage at all, you'll come and fight. Finn nearly jumped out of his skin, he was so mad. He shouted back at the bird, pancake flecking from his lips. You dare question me, courage? He shook a giant fist in the air. You tell that brute Benadonner that I'm building a bridge to Scotland and I'll see him soon. True to his word, Finn McCool started building a bridge that very same day. With nothing but the might of his back and the magic in his blood, he shaped the stones into perfect six-sided hexagons. He'd grab the raw granite, the very backbone of the earth, and tear it apart like you do with a sheet of paper. His thunder rolled like a tsunami across the land, and ancient Ireland trembled to hear it. For seven days and seven nights he labored, and when he was done, there were giant columns of stone stretching from Ireland to Scotland. It was a causeway, which is another word for a bridge supported by earth or stone. Of course, it was built so large, the steps so far apart, that you had to be a giant to walk it, which is why it's known as the Giant's Causeway to this very day. Finn McCool was a giant, a giant giant, a giant giant's giant, and he walked the causeway proudly. The raging sea lapped at his boots and the seals barked at his heels, but he never broke his mighty stride. Soon, he set foot on Scotland and began the hunt for the challenger, the giant Benadonner. Unfortunately for Finn, he didn't have to hunt for long. He soon found footprints that were twice as big as his own. Frowning, the giant followed them into a valley. There, he found the sleeping Benadonner. The Scottish giant was easily bigger than Finn, and his long red beard laid like a great sweep of autumn leaves along his chest. It rose and fell with his snores, which were so loud they shook the trees in the valley and set the birds to squawking. Seeing that gave Finn pause. He was big and strong, but he was clever, too. He knew that there are ways to win fights that have nothing to do with punches and shillelagh law. There was no sense throwing himself into a fist fight against this monster. Still, he couldn't bear to leave empty-handed. He crept up on the sleeping Benadonner and drew out his pocket knife. Quickly and closely as he dared, Finn McCool shaved the sleeping giant. It was a rough job, 
And soon, Finn had a pile of coarse orange hair at his feet, and Benedonner's beard looked like it had been chewed off by a dog. The Irishman paused for a moment to admire his work, and then thought of a final touch. He took a rock and scratched a message into the stone that Benedonner was using as a pillow. It read, Benedonner, I've come to fight, but you're too small to be worth me time. Be happy I've only shortened your beard, and not your life. Yours truly, Finn, the biggest giant, McCool. As you might imagine, Benadonner didn't take it well when he woke up. He hollered so loud that boulders cracked down the middle and rabbits turned their ears inside out. He stormed to the Scottish coast and there he found the giant's causeway that Finn had built. Without stopping to so much as fix his ragged beard, Benadonner charged across the stones and soon found himself on the Irish coast. Finn and his wife Una heard him coming, and Finn quickly told her what had happened. Lucky for Finn, Una was even more clever than he was. She quickly told him the plan, and he ran off to do as she said. While he was busy, she began to prepare their morning pancakes. As always, she started by setting the giant iron skillet over the fire. A minute later, the earth shook with footsteps. Una looked up in awe as Benadonner came into view. He was twice the size as Finn McCool and thrice the size of Una herself. His face was gnarled like an old stump and the patchy remains of his beard sprouted like fungus. When he spoke, it was like a raging sea trying to throw back a gravel shore. I'm here for the giant Finn McCool, he bellowed. The fool dares to shave me beard. I'll tear him limb from limb. I'll make him eat his beard for breakfast. I'll throw him in the sea and sail his sorry hide like a ship. Una smiled up at him. She had a big mixing bowl in her arms and was churning her heavy pancake batter. Finn? Well, I'm sorry, but he's not home right now. No? The giant asked, his face skeptical. Who is that, then? He thrust one tree-sized finger at Finn, who had wrapped himself in a bundle of blankets so that only his eyes were peeking out. Him? Oh, that's Finn's son, Baby McCool. She poured the batter from the bowl into the skillet. It immediately started to sizzle, and the air was full with the smell of buttery promise. He's not even a year old yet, just a wee lad. Not a great mountain like his father. Benadonner looked at Finn in his baby disguise. His brow furrowed and Finn could tell he was thinking hard. That's a mighty big baby, he said. Oh, and he's a right terror if he doesn't get his pancakes, Una replied. I'd offer you one, but they're for giants of Finn McCool's blood, and I wouldn't want you to hurt yourself. The Scottish giant scoffed. I don't care how big the baby is. Anything the great baby can eat, I can eat it too. Oh, if you say so, Una said. She served Finn the normal pancakes and he started eating messily, like a baby. Benadonner's pancake, though, she baked right around the iron skillet. She served it to him, slathered with butter and honey, to hide that the skillet was still inside. Oh, he's already finished too! Una said, gesturing at fake baby Finn, devouring his pancakes. Surely a mighty giant like you won't be out eaten by a wee babe. Scowling, Benadonner opened wide and took a big bite of his pancake. His giant teeth clanged down on the iron skillet inside. He yelped and threw the pan, hand going to his mouth. Oh, that pancake dipped my tooth, he said. And at that moment, Finn began to cry. It was a bellowing, fake baby cry, and it shook the stones around them. Don't cry, wee one, Una said, ignoring Benadonner. Your pa will be home soon. He'll throw the mean little man back into the sea. Don't you worry your little cotton diapers. Hearing this broke the last of Benadonner's courage. If Finn McCool's baby was already half his size and could eat pancakes so hard they chipped his teeth, what chance did he have? 
Suddenly, he was filled with the overwhelming urge to escape. He leapt up and made his way back to the sea. There, he stopped and looked back at Ireland. Finn saw him pause and took up his drum, bellowing into the bottom of it to amplify his already giant voice. Benadonor, don't go! I'm here for our fight! Common face Finn McCool, the giantest giant who ever gianted. That was too much. Benadonor fled into the sea. He didn't just run, though. He used his mighty fists and smashed the causeway as he went. Every step was punctuated by a wham, crack, crumble, and the stone steps tumbled into the waves. The giant's causeway destroyed. Ireland and Scotland were forever again separated by the sea. And so were Finn and Benadonor. And when anyone asked the Scottish giant about Finn McCool, That there's a giant, he'd say. A giant's giant. A giant, giant's giant. Then he'd pause and shake his shaggy head. And he has one great big baby. The end. Thanks for listening. 